Hi, I'm Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about a Macintosh SE30 logic board that was sent to me by none other than Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. He decided to challenge me to try and fix this board for part of Marchintosh. And so he sent me a message and said, hey, would you mind looking at this logic board for me? He had somebody send this to him to try and repair it. And so this was his friend Javier's board. And unfortunately, Joe could not get it to work. However, in the spirit of Marchintosh, I said, sure, let's take a look at it and see what's going on. Now, Joe had warned me that this machine had unfortunately experienced some terrible battery damage. And you could check out Joe's channel and his video about him trying to repair that Macintosh SE30 to see just what he did to try and get it to work and, well, the result of it. So once you've watched that and understand where he was at that point, well, now you're back here. And yeah, this board needed more work. And although the damage doesn't look too bad, we have to understand how the logic board was originally created to realize what potential damage is lurking just under the surface. To save space while creating complex circuit boards, companies often include multiple layers inside of the board. These layers allow for common connections, like power or ground, to be easily accessed by simply drilling down into another layer, using what is called a via, rather than running a long and winding trace to that point on the surface of the board. So although things on the surface may appear okay, it's difficult to understand if everything on the top is making a connection to the proper layers below. You could spend all day with the multimeter and a set of second-hand Apple schematics and still not find the fault you're looking for. Simply put, something is still not making a connection, and that's causing this logic board not to work properly. It could be something between the boards that we just can't simply see, or it could be something on the top or the bottom that we haven't discovered yet. Now in this case, the damage to this Mac was caused primarily by a leaking PRAM battery. This battery, also known as a clock battery, is a half AA size 3.6 volt variety that was used in many Apple machines. This battery retains the settings and date and time information while the machine is switched off. On this particular Mac, the battery is optional. Without it, the clock and other settings don't save when the power is lost, but the machine will still boot up without it. On other machines, like the Macintosh LC series, however, a PRAM battery is most often required. The original batteries in these systems are getting to be over 30 years old in age, and aren't designed to last that long. Over time, the batteries can succumb to their age, causing them to leak, swell, or explode. When this happens, this highly corrosive battery barf can find its way to all the important and sensitive bits on your computer. This can eat away and destroy traces and chips on the surface of the board. However, this can also flood vias. These are little pathways and important connections that exist between the layers of the board. If these connections between components and layers are severed, it can be a nightmare to repair them. While the Macintosh 128K, 512K, and Plus had the battery on the outside of the machine so it was easily replaceable, the Macintosh SE and later machines had the battery on the inside. So most users didn't bother trying to replace their Macintosh SE or Macintosh Classic clock battery. If they wanted this done, they likely took it into a service provider. To access the battery inside of a Macintosh SE or a Classic, you need a long Torx 15 screwdriver. But even after you're inside, you need to stay clear of the CRT and analog board. If you haven't properly discharged the CRT, you can accidentally touch something and get a nasty and potentially fatal electric shock. Furthermore, the logic board needs to be fully removed from the case to access the battery. On the original Macintosh SE board and on some other Apple products, you actually have to clip out the battery as it's soldered into place. To remove the logic board, you need to pull up on a thick and sometimes stubborn cable. With one wrong move, you could easily smash your hand into the neck of the CRT and permanently destroy the display. So you can see why most users didn't bother to try and replace the battery in their compact Mac by themselves. As these computers became outdated and obsolete, they were replaced. And most of these original batteries remain trapped inside these machines, providing a nice ticking time bomb for enthusiasts to discover years later. I've been quite lucky as most of my collection has dodged the exploding PRAM battery bullet. I've only had one or two casualties so far out of my sizable collection of Macs. 
Thankfully, some batteries may not have leaked or exploded just yet. It could be that the battery inside the computer has been replaced sometime in its life. However, do not risk it. If you have a computer in your attic, in your closet, in your basement, in your garage, and you have not removed the battery, stop what you're doing, go grab it, and get those batteries out. The computer's life depends on it. Sadly, this Macintosh SE30 board is just another victim of an expired, forgotten battery bomb. And although Joe tried extensively to try and fix this thing up, it just didn't want to work. So he gave it to me in hopes that I could try and fix it up. I did a few live streams of trying to fix this board, and you could see some of the clips here. I was looking at the board, and I noticed a few things that I thought I could resolve, and so I removed some solder balls, I fixed some minor traces, and I did some multimeter tests both on this board and one of my working boards to determine if there were any faults that I could identify. Joe had already ran some traces from the front to the back of the board, and you could see his extensive work here. However, during my repair, I had to add additional traces, so you could see this red wire here is one of those. Now, even though I did extensive work on this board, I didn't think that I could really fix the whole thing. I thought maybe we'd get some signs of life out of it. I didn't expect it to work fully outright, especially because Joe, being very capable, took so much time on this board already that I knew it wasn't going to be a simple fix. So my expectations were pretty low. Now, if you saw those live streams, you know where this ended up. We did get some different life out of that board. And what is happening now is we get some of those zebra stripes, those horizontal zebra stripes on the screen. So this board does have some life in it. However, it is a bit beyond what I'm able to figure out right now. Thankfully, I think we have some hope for this board. My friend Bruce of Brankus Creations has graciously decided to take some time out of his busy recapping schedule to take a look at this board and see if he could fix it up. I think he's up for the challenge. What do you say, Bruce? Hmm? What? That's the spirit. So I'm going to send this board to Bruce to see if he could resolve all of the problems and get it working again. Or if not, at least he'll have a good go at it. And between myself, Bruce, and Joe, I think we're giving this board the best chance it has right now. So can this board be fixed? Well, stay tuned to a future Brankus Creations video. I'm sure Bruce will tell you all about the fun that he's had trying to fix this board once he gets it. International shipping is what it is, so you might not see that video for a while. So to continue this saga, be sure to subscribe to Bruce's channel at Brankus Creations. I'll put a link up here or in the video description text box so you could do so. Also, check out Joe's original video about this Macintosh SE30 logic board at his channel, Joe's Computer Museum. Again, I'll put a link up here and a link in the video description. However, this doesn't mean I'm off the hook with repairing troublesome Macintosh SE30s. When I met up with Sean of Action Retro at the VCF swap meet, he passed along another cursed Macintosh SE30 logic board for me to look at. So it looks like I'll have my work cut out for me. Also, be sure to take a look at the video that Action Retro posted about what he picked up at the VCF swap meet. Again, I'll put a link in the video description. Also, if you want to see all the cool things I picked up at the 2021 VCF swap meet, please check out the videos linked in the video description. I still can't believe some of the amazing things I found, and I think you'll enjoy taking a look at them as well. So check those videos out. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this sort of stuff, please consider subscribing. It really helps our channel grow, and click that like button as well. Make sure you hit that notifications bell because you will be notified then when I do a live stream. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you could do so at Mac84TV. That is my handle. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you could do so for as little as a dollar a month. You get behind the scenes extras and videos before they go out anywhere else. So be sure to subscribe to that as well. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you right here next time on Mac 84.